we are working on this problem where we've been getting corrupted data out of the serial uh, ports on the uh, processor board. And we think it's due to fluctuations in the processor's inboard clock. And so we're trying this solution where we're replacing the onboard clock with an external 12 megahertz clock. Am I describing that right? Basically, yeah. We're, we're putting on a different and more uh, straightforward and reliable clock, which will pay less attention to the power supply. Okay. So how are you going to verify this? I mean, what's the, how do we test this? Well, this here is a power supply that's designed to fluctuate controllably. So basically, when I turn this on and plug this in, uh, then it'll send noisy power to the CPU board, and I'll be able to look on the oscilloscope and see whether the timing of the CPU board is fluctuating. So there's a certain oscilloscope down by the side of the table there. There surely is. Yeah. Fact, you want to throw it up? All right, cool. Voila. Beautiful. Um, don't drop the oscilloscope. I'll try not to. Scott specifically asked me not to. All right. Well, we're doing some experiments with some dead cells to solder them in place. Um, we use solder paste to, um, to attach them and provide the electrical connection. Um, basically, we're experimenting now with different amounts of solder paste to see what happens with uh, the flux we're using, how easy it is to clean off, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, so and not accidentally cook Chinese food with our <laughs> soldering station. Okay. Food on. Uh, Mark, do you want to open the lid there and show sure. folks what's inside? Okay, so this is a lid, and this is a pre-prototype here done out of plastic. Let's not worry about uh, uh, the conformity issues there. but. Uh, First thing you see, and this bay would be the remainder of it, completely filled with 0.35 mil thin plastic balloon material. So we've got a protective uh, cover here, and this will be trimmed down a little bit before flight, but this is specifically intended to keep the uh, mechanical parts of the gas inflator from impacting the very thin balloon material. And I'm going to pull this out for a little more clarity. Okay. But uh, here's our our gas cracker assembly and that takes a single four gram CO2 cartridge and we've got a piercing pin inside the lid and then you've got the main canister. Okay. Uh, we've got a fit in here and we've got about 180 degrees of preloaded spring tension and that is being constrained by three loops of 65 pound test spectra and we have a quarter inch 32 gauge nichrome wire which can fire to release the tension which at that point allows the spring to turn the lid and when the lid turns the uh, piercing pin which is inside then pierces the gas canister and it results in a smooth um, release of the gas into the balloon. Well what we're looking at here is the board is putting out um, the board is putting out a square wave here. Okay. This is what the board is putting out and this is the power that the board is seeing. Okay. And as I twiddle this, if I have it adjusted right, yes. Okay, I'm looking back at the oscope now, and oh, okay. the picture has changed. Yes, so this is the voltage going between the two levels, and this is the square wave not moving. So okay. we, are, we are happy with this. Great. All right, so we have a 3D rapid prototype printed version of our panels and hinge mechanism here. I'll show you how these fit together. Uh, the hinge just goes like that. There will be a pin in the middle that holds the two halves together. Um, the pin is captured in place with these two ends here. And the other side goes like that. And if I can, it's a little fiddly, but essentially it will fold together more or less like that. Here we have panels that are closer to the final version. Um, these are actual PCBs here. You can see on this side we have the pads for the solar cells. And the cells themselves look like, like this, the triangular. And essentially it works the same way as our plastic model. This will fold up into place here. And when it deploys, there are actually two hinges and it will fold open just like that. Well, we're all set up here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to energize the string cutter. A little bit of nichrome right here. It's going to melt the spectra, release the torsional spring tension, 
and that is going to drive the uh, ends of the gas cracker together and the piercing pin will pierce the internal uh, gas cartridge which looks like this and then the, uh, the gas will come out. So here we go on zero. Three, two, one, zero. Wow. Successful test.